So today's video is going to be a book haul. A few uploads ago I showed you a bunch of ebooks and audiobooks that I have purchased recently. For this video we're going to be talking about physical books. I have quite a few books to show you so I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail about the synopsis for any of the books. Also I don't actually know the synopsis for quite a few of the books um, but mostly I just don't, it's going to take forever. So I'll give you a very kind of brief what I know about it um, and then move on to the next one. So there's actually a bit of a story behind a lot of these books which I will tell you when I come to them but I want to show you two books that I purchased via book depository because they don't belong to the story. So those two are Pumpkin Heads by Rainbow Rowell, Rowell and Faith Erin Hicks. Um, so this is a graphic novel. I think a lot of people have read this one or at least know about it. And it's basically just the story of these two characters who work in a pumpkin patch and it's their last day of work before they both go off to college. And it's just them enjoying the experience of working in a pumpkin patch. That's basically what I know about it. Um, one of the things that I love about this book so far is that they have a map in the um, end pages and one is nighttime, one is daytime and as you can see from the map a pumpkin patch is something that has a lot more to it than just a place where you grow pumpkins in this story. I don't know how realistic that is. Um, I think it's a Halloween thing. We do have Halloween in Australia but it's not as big as it is in the States and when I was a kid it really really wasn't a thing at all. So it's sort of from what I can tell it's sort of like a little fair. They have chicken races, a petting zoo, hay rack ride, a little stage, lots of food stalls, a smalls pit, so it's yeah it's more like a kind of country fair sort of thing. That's really all I know about it. I think the artwork is really 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 nice. So there's that one. And then we have An Absolutely Remarkable Thing by Hank Green. I don't know much about this at all. Um, I really like John Green and I really like the Vlog Brothers, which for those of you don't that don't know, Hank Green is John Green, who is the author of um, The Fault in Our Stars. Hank Green is his brother, and Hank Green is a pretty big personality on YouTube. He is the main person behind SciShow, which I will link below. It's a really great little uh, YouTube channel. Oh, that's actually quite a few <laughs> SciShow channels now. And he also does Vlog Brothers, which is a YouTube channel where he and John Green basically talk to each other via video and put it online um, and it's pretty funny and pretty fun so I'll link that below as well but anyway um, so my partner is a huge fan of the Vlog Brothers and SciShow and I'm a fan of John Green as an author and so of course I had to buy Hank Green's book Although this is actually his first book, he's now got a second book out. I'm going to give it a read before I buy the next one, but I'm really excited. It sounds really cool. So those are the two books that don't have the story. So now for the story. So I was having a bit of an sort of audit of the books that I've read this year and since I've started my channel uh, and the books that I've bought over the last few years and books that I own in general. And I realised that I haven't really read particularly diversely, certainly when it comes to black authors, um, and I certainly don't own very many diverse authors. So I decided that I really needed to fix this, and I was thinking, oh, I'd just order on Amazon, but then I realised that, it, well, I thought that maybe if I went to my local bookstore, with a whole list and ask them to order them in. They might not order in just the one copy, they might order in a bunch of copies and that would encourage them to be a bit more diverse as well. I should say my local bookstore is actually really, really great. They have quite 
a diverse range of books, not just um, from a genre perspective, but from a author perspective. They do have quite a lot of black authors, Asian authors, um, LGBTQA plus authors. They particularly stock a lot of Tasmanian books and a lot of books written by Australian Aboriginal authors. So it's not that I was like concerned that they were very white, but you know, a bit more diversity is always a great thing. So I went in with a whole list of books that I have seen recommendations for on booktube that I have been wanting to read for a little while and of course they didn't have most of the books so I had to order them in. So while I was in the bookstore I was walking around having a look for all the different books and the woman that I was talking to, the sales assistant, was looking at the books on my list and sort of going oh well if you like this one or if you think you want to buy this one maybe you'll like this one and so on. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six books that are written by white authors that she recommended because she thought judging from what I had there would be a style that I would be interested in. And then I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen books by diverse authors that I either already had on my list or that she said, oh well, what about this one as well? So I'm going to show you those. Um, there's actually 15. <laughs> the other part of the story is that I thought that I'd picked up, well I'll explain it when we get to the book. So whilst the first trip to the bookstore, wandering around some of the white authors that, or books, authors by, <sighs> some of the books by white authors that the sales assistant suggested and that I agreed looked great were, this one is A Winter's Promise by Christelle Dabos. So this is the first book in the Mirror Visitor series and I don't really know anything at all about this book. Um, which I'm quite okay with. I don't mind not knowing about books, it's particularly um, thriller, mystery and fantasy. I actually often find that I quite like going in blind. I know that it's about a world where they have these sort of floating cities, but that's pretty much it. Uh, the main reason why I said yes, I will buy this book is because I saw it um, being spoken about by Regan from peruse project so yeah I thought if she likes it I think I will like it. I will link anyone whose channel I talk about in the description below so go and check them all out. So there's that one. Another one that I know pretty much nothing about whatsoever is the Gormenghast trilogy. So it's three books in the one by Mervyn Peak. Um, so this is apparently a classic, I think it's sort of speculative paranormal fiction. Um, it's supposed to be really amazing. The sales assistant suggested it to me based on all the other books I had in my list and as I said we were walking around and she just pulled it up and said oh this is amazing you should read it you'll love it. And I said hey speculative fiction classic, hells yes. So there's that one. Then we have Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. So this is a book that I've been really intrigued by and interested to read for a long time but when I went in on that particular day I had diverse authors written down that was what I was going to buy but the sales assistant suggested this one and I couldn't say no because it does sound really amazing. So it's about a woman who lives in I think the Louisiana Bayou in the United States um, and it's about her experiences growing up living in that part of the world. Um, it's pretty much the only thing I know about it but I've heard a lot of people both on booktube and in my real life talk about how amazing this is so I'm excited to read that one. Then we have The Watchmaker of Filigree Street by Natasha Pulley. I don't know anything about this book whatsoever. The sales assistant insisted that I would really like it. I think that it is historic fiction, which I do really love. I think that there's some speculative uh, magical realism attached to it. And as you guys know, 
Um, if you've been around for a while, that is pretty much my favourite genre. Um, so it just sounded really interesting and I really like the cover. Isn't that beautiful? I love the foiling. And on the back, I love all these little gears, very kind of, what's the word, steampunk. <laughs> So there's that one. I'm going to get through these quickly, guys. And then we have Days in the Caucasus by Benin, it says. I'm not sure. Benin, translated from the French by Anna Thompson Amada, Amadova. Sorry, really bad at pronouncing names. Um... Yeah, I think it's a memoir. It's pretty much all I know about it. Again, another book that I was told I would like. So I'm really hoping she was right. <laughs> and then we have Potter's Boy by Tony Mitten. I think it's an adventure story set in Japan. That's again pretty much all I know about it. I really didn't ask a lot of questions. I just kind of took it at face value that I would um, like these books. So <laughs> I'm hoping she didn't steer me wrong, but uh, yeah. We'll see how we go. So she also suggested a few others that I did buy there, then and there, but they are diverse or more diverse. So I've included them in the next part. So the first of these is Queenie by Candace Carty Williams. I actually have read this one and I thought it was amazing. I really, really enjoyed it. It is a contemporary set in London um, and it is about Queenie who is a person living in London and it's about her she's just um, her boyfriend wants to be on a break and she doesn't really cope with that and it's about her trying to figure out how to cope with that and then there's a, a discussion of quite a bit of trauma that she went through as a child um, and how that's affected her and she ends up deciding that she needs to go to therapy and so it's her journey through that and into some um, better mental health and yeah I really really enjoyed it and I would highly recommend if you are interested in that sort of thing but yeah there's that one and then we have this one Truganini by Cassandra Pivas I'm going to read you the back of this because I'm really intrigued by this one um, so it is a biography of Truganini Cassandra Pivas's answer ancestors told the story of an old Aboriginal woman who would wander across their farm on Bruni Island in southeast Tasmania in the 1850s and 1860s. As a child Cassandra didn't know this woman was Truganini and that Truganini was walking over the country of her clan the new known. For nearly seven decades Truganini lived through a psychological and cultural shift more extreme than we can imagine but her life was more than a regrettable tragedy. Now Cassandra has examined the original eyewitness accounts to write Truganini's extraordinary fully story in full. Hardly more than a child, Truganini managed to survive the devastation of the 1820s when the clans of southeast and Tasmania were all but extinguished. She spent five years on a journey around Tasmania, across rugged highlands and through barely penetrable for forests with George Angus uh, sorry, George Augustus Robinson, the self-styled missionary who was collecting the survivors to send them into exile on Flinders Island. She has become an international icon for a, for a monumental tragedy, the so-called extinction of the original people of Tasmania. Truganini's story is inspiring and haunting, a journey through the apocalypse. So I'm sure that you can hear why I had to buy it. Truganini is a very famous person in Australia and I think internationally as well. Um, like it says in the back, she was one of the survivors of essentially genocide in Tasmania of the original um, original owners of the land. So yeah, I think it's going to be really sad and really upsetting and really confronting and great. <laughs> I'll let you know how I go. And then the next one that I bought on this particular occasion was Too Much Lip by Melissa Lukashenko. Uh, I don't know very much about this book at all. Uh, Melissa Lukashenko is an Australian Aboriginal author that I have been very keen to read some of for the last 
six months or so and just haven't quite got there yet. Um, I did actually go in to try and buy uh, Malambimbi, which is another book by her, but they didn't have it. They did have this one, however, so I bought it. <laughs> and now for the books that I put on the list that I have bought. No particular order. We have Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. So this is a um, domestic, I think it's a domestic thriller. This is the TV show cover. So it has been made into a TV show by Reese Witherspoon, uh, which I am planning on watching once I've read the book. I, yeah, it sounds really interesting and I'm really looking forward to reading it. It's been pretty talked up here on booktube so I'm hoping that it lives up to the hype. How Long Till Black Future Month by N.K. Jemison. I thought this looked really interesting. Um, it was a bit of a cover buy, although like I said I ordered it in but I've seen the cover a number of times because the cover is just gorgeous very kind of steampunky. Um, it turns out that this is actually a collection of short stories which I probably should have researched a bit more. I'm not a huge short story book reader, short story reader, uh, but I am trying to get into them a little bit partly because I'm actually trying to write some short stories and partly because it's yet another area of fiction that I feel like I would like to get to know. Um, so I'm quite excited to have this one because I've heard a lot of great things about N.K. Jemisin as an author. So that one. With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo. Um, I basically ordered this one because I wanted to try Elizabeth Acevedo as an author um, and I know the poet X also by her is very popular on booktube and probably off of booktube as well but I also do know that it's written in verse form and I don't tend to like poems sorry um I don't tend to write like reading books in verse form yeah so didn't think that would be for me but I've heard some great things about this one I know a little bit about this one I think that this is about a young woman around sort of 17 18 who is um a teen mother and she really wants to be a chef and so it's about her trying to navigate learning how to be a chef and being a parent at the same time and all the stuff that goes with that and yeah I've heard it's amazing so I ordered this one. Then we have another book that I've heard a lot about on booktube that I haven't read yet that sounds really great and that is An Ember in the Ashes by Sabah Tahir. I don't know anything about this one. Um, I know that it's fantasy, young adult, beautiful cover, sounds really cool. Keeps one reading long after the light should have been out, says Robin Hobb. If you've been around for a while you would know that Robin Hobb is one of my favourite authors of all time so if she likes this one I reckon I will as well. Then we have The Interrogation of a Sharla Wolf by Ambelin Quaymulina. Um, this is not a book that I really have heard anything about. Um, I think I saw Cat from Stars and Embers mention this in a recent video, but that was the only time I'd ever heard anyone on booktube mention it. Um, it's written by an Australian Aboriginal author and I think it is a young adult fantasy, urban fantasy type of book, although I believe it's set in the Australian outback. It sounds really interesting. I don't even remember why I heard about it. I think it was a good read search that I did for something and it came up and it looked really cool and yeah so I thought let's give it a go. So I'll let you know again. And then we have The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. Now I'm not going to talk about what this is about because I know that basically everyone who has a booktube channel has either read it or at the very least knows about it. I've never read it um sounds really good I've been hearing all the buzz I definitely think I'll enjoy it I know why the cage bird sings by Maya Angelou do I need to tell anyone about this one the first in I think three installments of the autobiography by Maya Angelou who is a famous black American author um I've never read any Maya Angelou I've been hearing about the cage I know why the cage bird sings for years and years and it's a book that I've always been meaning to read and pick up and never have so now I have it. 
And then we have The Children of Blood and Bone and The Children of Virtue and Vengeance by Tomi Adeyemi. Another couple of books that are really big on booktube at the moment. I know they're fantasy books. That's basically all I know. And they look amazing. I've heard, actually I've heard mixed things about these books. Some people loved them, some people didn't like them, some people thought that one or the other was better and the other one was not very good and that um, seems to swap between the two. But yeah, I just thought they sound really interesting and in, I'm intrigued to read them so I bought them both. And lastly, the books that I am most excited about from this haul, which is saying something because I'm super excited about all of them, um, and that is The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemison and The Obelisk Gate, which is the one that I have to go and get this afternoon, and The Stone Sky. So this is a series by N.K. Jemison. It's a fantasy series. Um, Apparently it's amazing. Basically everyone that has ever talked about these books have said that they're fantastic, both in real my real life and on booktube, so I'm super excited to read them. Um, and yeah, I don't really know much except that they're fantasy, high fantasy, and I think they're a little bit dark, probably not grim dark, but a little bit dark, so I guess I'll find out. All right guys, so that was my giant book haul for the last couple of months. Hello, so I'm just popping in on the end of my haul video because I actually hauled yet another book the other day which was My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. Um, this is a book that I have been hearing a lot about um, if you watched my Midi Freakout tag, you would know that it is an anticipated book that was released this year that I haven't read yet. So yeah, like I said, I've been hearing a lot of buzz about this book. It sounds really, really interesting. Sounds kind of upsetting, but like a great character study and a really fantastic work. So I saw it in the bookstore. When I actually went to the movies, um, my friend and I went into the bookstore attached and it was there in the recent releases, so I thought I'd grab it. It's not quite the cover I was actually hoping for, but that's okay. It's what's inside that counts. <laughs> I also just wanted to very quickly touch on the changes to my channel that you would have noticed recently. Basically, I'm just trying to make it a little bit more interesting and enticing for people. So I've been updating all the thumbnails because they were pretty boring. So I'm hoping that they are much more interesting and I'm updating my way that I introduce the um, video and myself etc. So I did a little poll on Twitter um, asking if people liked it as it was, asking if people would prefer a um, musical intro up front or prefer no intro at all or prefer a little bit of an explanation about the what's coming up and by about one person <laughs> um, a musical intro up front and then just straight into the video was the winner so that's what we're going with let me know in the comments below what you think of it if you like it um, because I'm, I'm basically trying to do what the people want so let me know. Um, also let me know what you think of my thumbnails because yeah I want to know if they're interesting to you if you are enjoying them so thanks for your feedback. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I will see you next time.